Hello ladies and gents, in this video we will implement this car damage selector which we can hover over some parts of our car template here and then when we click on any part we can select one of the three types of damage and then we can select the severity of that damage which will be implemented by different colors and opacities and we can also reset our selections. Without further ado, let's get started. We have a car template here in the PNG format and the first step will be to convert this to an SVG and create some paths that we can select and manipulate. This step is optional because I will also include the SVG that we come up with at the end of this step in the GitHub repository, so you can directly start with that one. For creating the selectable paths, I will use a free software named Inkscape. So I go to Inkscape, then File and Open, then I select my PNG image, leave everything as default, and I will just start with this bumper part, so I just zoom in. And I'm not an expert of Inkscape by any stretch of the imagination, so I'm pretty sure there is an easier or better way to create paths maybe even in Adobe Illustrator, but I will just show you how I do it. I will use this pen tool right here and I simply select all the corners first. I will take care of the curvy parts later on. And I close the path and to see it clearer Let's select a fill property here, we can make it black and you can play with the opacity so we can see the underlying lines as well. Let's make it more transparent. And next I select this node tool here and I select one of the lines that should be a curve and then by clicking this insert new node here, I add a new node and select that one only. Then I select this, make selected node smooth and just play with it and see how it looks. This looks okay for this part. Then let's move on to this, add a new node, make it smooth and just play around until it looks fine. It's not perfect but this looks okay. Now let's move on to the, the next one, this door right here. Now this is a little more complex because I don't want to include this window here. Let's begin with the outer one again with the pen tool. So I select the whole door then take care of the curves and this one This looks okay. Finally, this one is a little bit off. Okay, now it looks better. Now let's create one for the window itself, again using the pen tool. Thank you. 
this looks good enough now what we will do is first I will select the outer one then holding the control key I will select the smaller one I'm sorry holding the shift key at least on Mac OS and then I will go to path and select exclusion and now we have a new path which excludes our window here now I will just fast forward all the parts that I will do next so that you're not bored to death Okay, now that we have all our paths ready, let's save our new SVG image. So we go to File and Save As. We forgot to change the format. So it's SVG. And now if we open it with our browser, we can see the new image, but it's looking small and we actually don't want these stylings here so let's open our new svg file in vs code to make some changes now first we already have a view box attribute so we can remove this width and height attributes and if we save it will auto scale to its container let's refresh the page and this one is fixed and if we go back we will see an image tag which is just the base64 encoded version of our background image our PNG basically and if we scroll all the way down we will see all the paths that we created using Inkscape now we can see there are some styles applied to our paths we want to get rid of this so for now let's set the opacity to 0 for all of them let's save and refresh now all our paths are transparent now let's load and display our new SVG image I have an empty project here named image selector and our PNG and SVG files which you can find in github in the starter folder and let's go to our web app folder and view we have the home view which is empty here let's add some content to our page and we will use the html control from the core library so let's first define the namespace xmlns core equals sapui core and let's add our control core html and let's give it an id of id svg container because we will dynamically load our svg and set the content of this html control we save and now load our svg but first let's create a new folder inside our web app folder named assets and I will just move our SVG image into that folder so it's inside our project and let's go to our home controller in the on init function we will load our SVG image using Ajax from jQuery so I say dollar dot Ajax and inside the object notation the URL of our requests will be slash assets so the root path of our project slash assets slash car dot SVG and let's also make it async 
and for the success event we will get back some data and here first we have to serialize it and convert it to a string let's define another variable named content equals we can use the xml serializer let's say new xml serializer and we have a method on it which is named serialize to string i think it's with a z instead of s okay serialize to string okay and we just pass in the data and now we access our html container so this dot get view by id and let's copy our id from the view and we simply say set content and we pass in this new content variable now if we save and check our application we might have to refresh it it's not working let me restart the dev server okay now we can see our image but it's too large so let's make some quick styling changes let's go to our home view first i want to add some predefined classes to our page just one actually which is sap ui responsive content padding okay and for the html itself we have to wrap it with another control that we can style so i will create a vbox control and move the html content inside and let's give our vbox a class we can name it svg container now let's create this class in our css file let's give it a max width of let's say 50 ram should be enough and we set margin to zero auto so it's centered now if we check we might have to refresh yes now this looks much better now let's add some hover effects to our svg so it looks more interactive let's go back to our app and open up our svg file and we scroll all the way down to our paths we have some inline styles here i will select all of these and replace them with some css classes so we say class equals let's call it part now let's create this part class and we will have an hover effect so let's create that as well now if we first check our image and refresh our page we will see all parts are black because that's the default and let's get rid of that we can do it by setting the fill opacity to zero and also we don't want any lines let's also make the stroke opacity zero now this looks better and when we hover we want the fill opacity to be one so it's visible and let's set the color to a gray b2 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 now if we refresh and check might need to rerun the service again now we can see some different colors when we hover over our paths now let's go back to our app and add some click event listeners for our paths let's go to our home view we first have to wait for all our paths 
and our SVG to be rendered. So we can use the after rendering event of our HTML control. Let's create an event handler named on SVG container rendered. Let's copy it and implement it in our controller after on init method. Now this will be called several times because it will be called once this is rendered without the SVG and when we load our SVG and set the content it will be called again. So the first thing we need to do is to check if we actually have any paths. Let's begin by getting the path elements. Let's say get all path elements here and we can say const a paths equals we will again use jQuery and we will select all the path elements which have the part CSS class on them and now as we said we will check elements are in the DOM and we can simply do that by saying a paths.length if it's falsy we simply return else we register on click event on the paths and we say a paths.bind and we will bind the click event and as for our event handler for now let's get the event object and simply console.log let's log the id of the clicked uh, path if we check our svg again we will see that we have some auto generated ids for all our paths path 1 path 2 etc so let's access those first we need to get the jquery object and we can do that by wrapping it with the jquery and event dot target and then we can use the attr jquery method and the attribute we want is the id let's save and check let's open our developers console clear it and now if we click on any of our paths or parts we will get the id of that path in our console now let's go back to our code and implement a popover to be shown when we click on one of our paths from which we can select a damage type. For that let's create a new fragment inside the fragments folder inside the view folder and let's name it damage selector dot fragment dot xml and inside we begin with our fragment definition so core fragment definition and the namespaces we of course need the core library from SAP UI core and we will also use the mobile library which will be the default namespace sap.m and let's create a responsive popover and set show header to false and as for the content let's simply create a list and as list items we will use standard list item control type will be navigation so we see a nice navigation arrow at the end and they will all have some titles let's also add some custom data from the core library which will have a key and a value now we will have three types of damages so let me duplicate this the first one we will call scratch and the custom data will serve as the damage type let's say capital S for scratch 
next one let's say dent and the type will be D the last one is we'll say paint chip and the type will be C now let's go back to our controller and create a new event handler named underscore handle path click and we will need the event object to access the source and before replacing this here let's copy this because we will need this later and store it in a variable as path id equals this and now let's load and display our popover again we do it lazily so if there is no this underscore let's name it simply all popover we will load it else we will directly open it so this dot all popover dot open actually open by and here we can pass in a UI5 control or an HTML element and we can get it from our click event so let's say const or source here equals or event dot target because this jQuery or event object has a target attribute which points to the HTML element so we can pass in this one here and here we first need to load our fragment so we have to import it as a dependency first let's add it here sap ui core fragment and let's add it to our callback function then in here we simply say fragment.load we pass in an object we will specify the ID as our view ID so we can say this dot get view dot get ID next we add the name of our fragment which will be let's copy the namespace first of our app and then view dot fragments dot and what did we name it it was damage selector and let's also pass in the controller and when this promise resolves we will get a popover let's call it all popover and let's save it in our variable here equals or pop over and then edit as a dependent to our view this dot get view dot that dependent and then we simply open it let's save and check if it works well, if I click on this I still get the IDs because I forgot to replace this event handler now instead of this we will have this dot handle path click and also let's bind to this object so it points to our controller from inside the handler now let's try again let's click on this door okay I see an error maybe I just need to restart the dev server again let's see and now we can see our list that we can select from if I click on this it appears there if I click here it appears there now let's also add a second page to our popover which will contain the slider let's go back to our app and our fragment now since we will have multiple pages instead of just a list our content will be a nav container so let's create it and let's give it an id of id nav container 
and we need to give it a width and a height the width let's set to 12 RAM and height we will set to 9 RAM and now as children we need pages so let's create the first one a page control let's give it an ID of type and we don't want any scroll bar so we set enable scrolling to false and now as the content let's put our list inside our page and here I will add a custom header to our page and inside we will have a button inside the toolbar of course and let's move it to the end so we add a toolbar spacer first and then let's add a reset button to reset any type that we selected previously and as for our second page that's also created here this time we will set the ID to severity let me use multiple lines this time we will have a few more attributes I want a style class SAP UI responsive content padding and we want a navigation button so show nav button equals true and let's also specify the event handler for that so nav button press equals on nav back next we will also need a footer so show footer equals true and in the footer we will display a save button but lastly here we again set enable scrolling to false now this is our second page and as the content we will have just a slider for now and let's also add our footer and our save button again we have a toolbar and a spacer first and we have a button with text save Now let's add some event handlers to our list items so we can navigate to the next page when we click on them. So we say press equals, let's say on select damage type. And I will copy these to all the other items. And let's go back to our controller and implement that. First let's uh, extract the type, so the custom data we implemented here from the item that we just clicked. We will use it later. Let's say const as type equals oevent.getSource which will give us the standard list item. Then we simply say data type and for now let's log it to the console. And now let's add a comment here, navigate to the next page. And first let's get our second page. So we say const, let's name it all target equals this dot get view by ID and we set it to severity and we then say this get view by id and we access our nav container this time and we say dot to all target while we're at it let's also implement the nav back function so we named it on 
now back I see a typo here enable scrolling okay and our back navigation we just copy this one and our target will be type this time and one last thing every time we open the popover we want to display the first page so let's go to our fragment and add another event handler here named before open equals let's call it on before open and let's also implement that one here and it will be basically the same so we can even disregard this and use this instead now let's check our app looks like i need to restart the dev server again now let's see we click on the hood we have our reset button have our list if we click on scratch we get s and we get the slider let's close it we open it again we again have the first page for paint chip we get c and for dent we get d now let's add some colors when we select a damage type let's go back to our app and create three new style classes first one we'll call scratch and another one for dent let's name it dent and last one for the paint chips and we will call this chip first let's set some colors for the fill attribute for scratch let's use a color called the d27700 an orange color and for dent i will just copy this our color code is 046c7a and for the chips it's 6c32a9 and obviously we want the opacity to be 1 so they are visible let's also add that one Okay, we save and let's go back to our controller now when we select a damage type instead of logging the type to the console we will set the corresponding style class but for that we need access to the path that was selected now we use this path id to just log it to the console now let's replace that and instead name it this dot o active path and we don't want the id attribute we just want the jquery object itself now let's copy this and come back here and let's change this to a switch case statement here we have the s type and our values were s for scratch let's duplicate this we have d for dent and c for paint chips now for this one we will simply add the class to our active path and our class is scratch and for this one it will be dent for this one it will be chip and we should remove all these classes before adding any of them to avoid duplication so let's call these and this time it's remove class and we remove these if any of them are present now if we save and check our app 
Now we select scratch, we see this orange color. For that it's this greenish blue, I guess, and for the paint chip we have purple. Now let's also implement the reset to remove all the classes. Let's check our fragment and find our reset button here. Let's add an event handler, press equals on press reset. And let's implement it here quickly. And all we need to do is remove all the style classes from our active path. So I'll just copy these lines here and we should also close the popover after resetting so let's copy that one as well this dot all popover dot close let's test that one as well select the hood and we don't have save functionality yet and if we click again and reset the styling is gone now let's also make use of our slider as well. Let's go back to our app in our fragment. Let's add an event handler to our slider and we will use the live change event. Let's name our handler on change severity. And by default, I want to start it from 50. So I will set the value to 50. And by default, the mean value is zero and max value is 100. Now let's copy this event handler and go back to our home controller. Maybe here, create our event handler. Now first we will simply get the value of our event object. So we say const i value or f since it will be a float equals o event dot get parameter and the parameter name is simply a value now we need to convert this value which is between 0 and 100 to a css fill opacity attribute here so we can update this and this is between 0 and 1 so we just need to divide this value by 100 and then we simply access our active path and using the CSS jQuery method, we pass in an object. First, the attribute name, fill opacity, and we set it to our f value variable. And since we want it to be 0.5 by default, that's why we set it to the value to 50 here for our slider. Let's also set these values to 0.5 by default. And now let's check our app. Looks like again, need to restart the dev server. And now if we click on this hood, for example, we select scratch and the opacity is 0.5 by default. And when we change this slider, it changes automatically. Now let's implement the save functionality so we can persist our values. Let's go back to our app and let's begin by creating a new damage model. So let's go to model.js, models.js. And here let's create a new function named create damage model. And here we will return a new JSON model. And the data will be an object per each path. And if we check our Let's see SVG file. We have an ID for each path and it starts from path one and goes like two, three, all the way to 15 here. So we can start with path one and each path 
we'll have an attribute named type, which will be the type of the damage. So it can either be S for scratch, D for dent, or C for chip. Next, it will have a severity, which will be 0 0.5 by default. Now let's duplicate this. So we have 15 of those. And let's quickly update the names. Okay, that's 15. Now let's copy this name and go back to our controller and import it here. We go one level up. To the model folder and then models.js and we remove the extension. Let's name it also models here and inside our init function maybe here actually we don't need a comma. Let's set a new model to our view so we say this dot get view dot set model and our model will come from models that create damage model and let's name our model as damage as well we save and now let's go back to our fragments and here we have our save button so let's add an event handler to it we say press equals on save and let's copy the name and implement it in our controller maybe all the way down here And in here first, let's get the data of our local JSON model. So we say const all data equals this dot get view dot get model damage dot get data. And now we have to set the selected damage type and the severity or the fill opacity, so to speak, on our active path. So let's create an if statement here. We say if this dot or active path dot has class. So if it has the scratch CSS class, we will set the value on our model data as S and how we can access it is very easy. We simply say all data and the key will be the ID so we can say or oh, active path dot attr and we want the id attribute and now we simply say dot type equals s and let's create an else if actually since we have only one line so we don't need the curly braces so let me duplicate this twice and here we say as if it has class dent type will be d and if it has class chip type will be C. And let's also add a default, so an else statement here. And let's set it to an empty string. And as for severity, it's also very easy. Let's copy this part right here. And this time we say that severity And it will be equal to the fill opacity CSS value of our active path. So I will again copy this right here and we say dot CSS and then the name of the attribute which is fill opacity. Now let's log to the console our data to see what it will look like. And finally let's refresh our model reflect the changes actually let's copy it from here that refresh and one last step of course let's close our popover so we say this dot all popover 
that close. Let's save and check what we have. Let's select that this time and let's make it less than 50. And if we save, our data looks like this. The type looks missing, so maybe I misspelled something. Let's see. Okay, I see that I forgot to add else here. This should be else if let's save. Let's select scratch something below 50. We save. And indeed, we have the type S and severity 27. Let's also select this one that we know the ID is path 1. Let's do a dent this time and more than 50. And now we have type D for path 1 and severity is 0.7. One small thing is that severity we defined as a float, but now it's set as a string. So let's fix that quickly. And when we set it here, we simply make this a number by adding a plus sign. And this should do the trick. Let's quickly check. We save and this looks better now. Now let's also implement the cancel logic. Let's go back to our app and go to our fragment. Let's add another button next to our save button on the left side and name it cancel. And the event handler will be named on cancel. Now let's copy it and under on save, let's implement it. Now this will be very simple to save. We will just revert back the changes. Let's remove this console.log first and get our data. Let's just copy this line. And now we need to revert this if statement. So we will check the type on our model and accordingly we will set the style classes. But first let's remove all the style classes that might be on our part first. So we say remove class, scratch, dent, and chip. So it's all reset. And let's write our if statement. Now we will say if this equals to S, so our damage type on the model is equal to S, we will say our active path dot add class and the class name is scratch and two more statements as if it's d it will be dent and finally as if if it is c it will have the chip class and as for the fill opacity, let's again copy this dot or active path and we actually set it somewhere. Let's check here with that CSS method. Let's paste it here and now our value will be again it will come from our JSON model and it will be named severity this time. And since we are just making changes on the DOM reference of our path, we don't need to refresh our model. We are just reading data from it, but we should close our popover. So let's also copy this from here and paste. We save and let's see what we have. Let's start with the hood again. Let's say scratch something more than 50. We save. Let's try to change it to dent, for example, with less severity. We save. And now I say it's a chip, very severe, and I cancel, and we are back to dent. 
Now, one more thing we should consider is that we can select something else here and instead of clicking on cancel, we can just click somewhere out of the popover, which should also work as cancel. So let's go back to our fragment again and I will simply copy this on cancel event handler and to our responsive popover, let's add another event handler, which is after close. And we will simply pass in the same event handler so that if the style is any different from the model, it will be reset. Let's check if it works. We said scratch something. Then we said dent here and click outside. Then it's back to normal again. Now lastly, let's make some bug fixes. For example, we selected this damage as scratch and we said it was 100%. Now if we select another part and select a damage type, we will see that the slider is still at 100. Now we need to reset it. So let's get back to our app. And if we check our fragment, remember that we have this on now back event handler for the before open. Now using this, let's reset our slider. But first let's rename this to something else because this will not just be a simple navigation now. Let's say on before open now and update it here. And to be able to reset our slider, let's give it an ID. Let's say ID slider. Now in here, what we are going to do is first we will check if we have any existing severity on our model. If so, we will start the slider from there. Or if we don't have anything, which means we are clicking on an empty part, we will start from 50, which was our default. Let's begin by copying our model data here. And to make it cleaner this time, I will add another variable here named all data current because we will have a Turner expression and it will be this part right here. Now after this navigation, let's say this that get view that by ID ID slider and we say dot set value and here we can say if all data current dot severity is true t so if we are clicking on a part that we previously set something some severity here we should set the current severity and remember it's between one and sorry it's between zero and one so we need to multiply it by 100 if not we just default back to 50. now if we save and check let's select scratch something here save and if we select again we will see that it's not 50 it's where we left off but now if we try to go back with this button it's broken because we were using the same on now back method for that so let's quickly get it back i will just copy it and then paste it here so it's still there for the now container let's try again scratch for a little this time Okay, it's saved. We can also go back. Now let's try to reset our styling. And now we see that it's not reset. Let's check our reset method. Now here we see that we manually manipulate the models. So remove them from our path and then close the popover. But whenever the popover gets closed, remember it's triggering this after close so on cancel event handler so here instead what we can do is we can just manipulate our model data let me again copy our model data let's say from here and then what we can do is let me also copy this part here so we get the data of our current path 
and then we set the type as an empty string and we set the severity to 0.5 which was our default then we just need to refresh our model and then when the popover is closed on cancel method will take care of the rest now let's try it again scratch somewhere here save and now if we reset now we see it's looking better but still not quite right let's see what went wrong here if we check our path it still has the part class but the issue is when we first selected a damage type and played with the severity we overwrote the fill opacity here so we have created some inline styles here and what we simply need to do is let's go to our run cancel method here now instead of setting this fill opacity manually here we need to check if this is necessary and it's only necessary if one of these conditions are met so we can simply say if this active path let's start with this one and instead of add class as class let me copy this or if it has the dent class or if it has the chip class then we can set the fill opacity like so so in if any of these conditions are met else we just need to revert back to default and we just need to remove the inline styling here and we can do it with jquery again we can say this or active path dot attr and the attribute is named style and we can set it to an empty string now let's check after i restart the dev server now let's try let's say dent here very severe save let's reset it now everything is back to normal that would be all for this video i hope you enjoyed it and thank you all for watching